Thank you for tuning in to Mr. Cliff's Toy Shop. On today's review, we take a look at the Mesco Invincible Iron Man. Today, I'll be reviewing this figure in six categories. Accessories, articulation, design, is it essential to your collection, functionality, and price. Once all scores are totaled, I'll give you my opinion if this figure is a pass or a purchase. So for accessories, I'm actually going to push pretty quickly through this portion here. So Iron Man comes with two blast effect pieces. I haven't seen exactly where this attaches to, so I'm not sure if it's his hand, his feet. We'll find out later on in the review. He also comes with one unibeam, which attaches to his chest. He comes with four boost effect pieces. I am sure that this can be mounted to the bottom of his foot. I'm not sure if any can be mounted to his hand. He comes with projectile effects, and man, do I like these. Whoa. And this has to be my favorite accessory that Iron Man comes with. Oh, these things are done so incredibly well. He comes with six pair of hands, two fisted, which are already on the figure. Okay, so there is a port for this. All right, so it does work. Iron Man comes with a stand and base. He comes with a singular head scope, which the lid can be removed to show a Tony Stark face underneath. The face is very pale, reminiscent to me of a lot of the earlier Mezco figures such as Daredevil and the first few Punishers that were released. So for accessories, I've had Iron Man figures that come with more. So this isn't really about how much stuff he comes with. It's about the innovation to the things that he actually comes with. So starting off with this piece, which attaches to a portion of his hip, these are the type of accessories that Iron Man figures should come with, people. Hey, companies, if you're watching, you need to copy this. This is just simply incredible. Not just the amount of details coming from translucent to a yellow to an orange. It's just that they had engineers or developers come up with the idea to give us something like this. And again, for the missile, which attaches to a portion of his arm and gives off a blasting effect, it's just the engineering and the idea behind the pieces that we receive. So for accessories, I'll be given an Iron Man a 10 out of 10, not from how much he comes with, but for what he comes with. So for articulation, the neck and the head is on separate pegs, which adds for added range of movement. So what I really like, I can push the neck forward, tilt the head back, and now can get Iron Man into a flying pose. You get an excellent amount of pivot in the neck alone, not to mention with the head. And you do get full rotation. I guess I'll leave the face plate off uh, to continue this video. So the arm is able to rotate a full 360. You get an upper bicep cut, which I was actually surprised. The elbows are double jointed going up about this much. You do receive some rotation or full rotation. I guess at the gauntlet is fair to call it. And with the hand, it hinges up down side to side. You just have to find which way the line on the peg is and match it and then you're able to move it. So the torso is two separate pieces, which is no surprise. However, they do not move independent of one another. The top does, however. So with the top, you're able to move it back about that much, forward that much, and you get some pivot and rotation. I don't want to rotate it too much as this is a great paint job. 
and I just feel nervous about the paint scratching, even though I have not scratched mines as of yet. So now with the lower torso, you don't get any movement. No waist, turn, no motion, no pivot. However, this belt is a floating piece. So now with the legs, the legs are able to move up about that much. However, they do drop down. So as they drop down, you can get added movement. So the leg kicks out to the side about that much. Backwards about that much. Forward, maybe a little more than this. But as this part meets here, I'm nervous again about the paint scratching. So that's all I will push it. You get some rotation, some upper rotation. Knees are double jointed, bending in that far. And you also get rotation at the boot. The foot is able to move up barely any, down barely any. And then again, you get that weird Mezco pivot. So for a man inside of a suit of armor, I wasn't expecting a hell of a lot of articulation. I am surprised at what we actually receive, especially in the arms. There's a lot of range of movement there. I'm satisfied with the torso. It would have been good to have some movement in the lower uh, region. However, I can understand why. The surprise to me and really lack of articulation that, in my opinion, stunts the figure a little bit would be the legs just simply not being able to kick forward a little more than they can. And perhaps they move out a little bit more. I really don't think so. And I didn't want to uh, scratch the paint on the figure as well. So for articulation, I'm going to give Iron Man a 7 out of 10. I was just playing with one of my hot toys. And with the hot toys, you actually get more range of movement uh, within the legs. So for design, Mesco was able to take a classic figure and make it look modern. The paint applications are tremendous, even within the hinges. They did a fantastic job as getting close as they can to the rest of the paint. I really like the choice between metallic golds, candy apple red, and in some areas you do have matte finishes. However, it works all well together. There's some great scope work throughout the figure. It will not stand out as much simply because there are two color options, excuse me, well, two colors that are on this figure. But beautiful scope work coming down from the chest into the abdominal regions and continuing through to the legs all the way down to the feet. The scope work even continues throughout the back, showing areas to where it looks like there are bolts holding the design of the suit together. So I left the arms extended. That was the one area that I missed for articulation. So for design, I'm going to give Iron Man a 10 out of 10. Is Iron Man essential to your collection? I'm gonna start with a resounding yes. Whether you're looking for a standalone hero to complete a certain group, have a character that's intermingled in the storylines of many of the Marvel characters. I'm actually very surprised that Iron Man was not the first character that Mezco introduced. For every toy line that makes Marvel figures, they each have an Iron Man figure. Even for the lines that only produce one Marvel character, it's typically Iron Man. So as far as being essential to your collection, I'm going to give Iron Man a 10 out of 10. So for functionality, Iron Man comes with accessories that can be changed out very easily. Starting with the helmet, Mezco uses a magnet design, which I believe was adopted from Hot Toys, to where you simply can pull off the faceplate and attach it to the top of the head. The chest beam simply replaces the small piece that was there when I pulled mine off, it went flying, so just be careful. You have to get your nail underneath this tab, lift, and then simply this piece replaces that and it locks and stays in place. Also for the hip missiles, that's what I'm gonna call them for lack of a better term, 
It is very easy to plug in. You have your piece up top. You put it here and there we go. I also like the drop down design. Again, this may have been adopted by Hot Toys. I can't say that with all certainty. So you can drop the leg in order to get added movement. The only thing with this is not a lot of added movement. Now you can angle the leg to make sure that you can get it a little bit higher, but I would still like this leg to be able to come up more. Do you get a light up feature, which is very easy to use? Simply remove this pack underneath it. I didn't want to take it off underneath it. Uh, there's one screw holding the back piece in place, and then you plug in a battery or two, which Mezco actually provides. So I actually forgot that in the accessories part. It does come with batteries. Now, what I've noticed with my Mezco figure, certain parts are getting loose. The arms are a bit loose, and the legs are a bit loose. So I'm just wondering how will he hold up over time? So for functionality, I'm going to give Iron Man a seven out of 10. That score would have been higher. However, due to the loose limbs, I'm simply worried how he may hold up over time. So for pricing, Iron Man comes in at 90 bucks before shipping. I had ordered mine from an online retailer. However, it was taking a long time before I received them. So I canceled that order and picked it up from my local comic shop. And I paid an extra few dollars for him. So the question, is he worth it? When it comes to Iron Man figures, I have a lot, especially within the 1-6 scale. I would say I have over 40 Iron Man armors. So I say that simply to state that I feel that I know a little a little bit about Iron Man action figures. So this particular figure here, he comes with a decent amount of accessories. Not the most that I have seen with an Iron Man figure, but perhaps the most innovative. And some of the things that I've been asking for and wanting from companies like Hot Toys that we do not see with their action, with their Iron Man figures in particular, and that's the blast or missile effect pieces. So I really love that Mezco added those with this particular figure. So for hot toy, most hot toy collectors anyway, I'm a little bit different from the average hot toy collector. They spend a lot of time talking about the paint and how superb the paint is. This figure is painted particularly well. Just the gold and, and the red, the metallic, the matte finishes, blend in very well together. Mezco have, has also given us a light-up feature. It would have been nice if the light-up feature would have carried on to the head and even the repulsors and the hand, but not that I miss them at all. For the majority of my hot toy figures, they do not have batteries in it. It's just, in my opinion, too complicated. I don't understand why Hot Toys does not create a system to where we're just installing one battery. However, I'll save that rant for another review because this isn't about Hot Toys. This is about what Mezco has given us. And I think the reason that I'm talking about Hot Toys figures so much is because this hair reminds me of a shrunken down Hot Toys. However, with better articulation from the torso up, better accessories, for a better value. So back to the original question, is he worth a purchase? Absolutely. For those that want a highly detailed action figure, this is it. And you're getting it at a fraction of the cost that you would have to pay for another company to offer you something that may not be this good. I'm gonna go out on a limb here and I'm gonna say that this is the best Iron Man figure that I own. So for pricing, I'm going to give this guy a 10 out of 10. That will give this guy an overall cliff score of 54 out of 60. So here he is next to Marvel Legends Deathlock. And here he is next to Kami Cave Igor. And man, just a moment ago, I said that the Mezco version was the best Iron Man that I've owned. I may have to hold that until I actually review and play with this guy next to him. 
And here he is next to Hot Toys Mark 45, I believe. So thank you very much for tuning in to Mr. Clips Toy Shop. I hope to see you during the next review.